Hello. And uh, as you can see, I have trimmed my beard a bit. So you get to see that grow out again before I decide to finally trim it. That's, that's how I do. Um, so anyway, um, first thing I want to cover is that you may have missed it, but I did my first sort of surprise live stream on YouTube uh, on Saturday. And I think it went really well. The people who showed up had a lot of fun. Um, people were coming in and out and helping out with the the puzzles. We did we did some puzzles where where I kind of just solved it live, and so it was more of an experience like um, like a normal YouTube video. Except uh, people could yell at me for trivial stuff, like "Oh, you you missed the seven there. You can you can get that digit or something." They'd yell at about that stuff, right? So that, that was pretty fun. And then we also did a, a collaborative uh, solve for a puzzle that I, I don't think I could have done on my own, at least not in a timely uh, fashion. And that, that was also very fun. And so everyone sort of contributed their ideas on how to make progress on the puzzle. Um, also, uh, some people showed up with uh, puzzles that they created themselves and asked me to solve them and got to see, see that getting solved live. So we had a nice mix. It went on for six hours. Obviously, no one has to be here for the full six hours. But that gave a nice slice of time for people to come in and, and chat and have some fun and so, do some Sudoku. So um, my plan moving forward is to do a live stream once a week every Saturday um, at starting around 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's uh, west coast of the United States. So you can use any various online tools to see what local time that is for you. And um, I will also um, probably a day or two prior put up a, a scheduled thing so that YouTube, it'll show up in your feed as scheduled live stream or something. And you, so that way you'll know exactly when that, that's going to happen. Um, so yeah, that was very fun. I do plan to, to keep doing it. And hopefully with more warning this time so uh, people who want to show up can. Uh, if you do uh, have a puzzle that you created yourself and you think that you'd like to have that solved at the live stream, do bring that prepared. Um, and we'll see if uh, we can get to you. Um, obviously, if there's too much demand, I'll have to pick and choose, but hopefully I'll be able to get to everyone's. So anyway, what is this puzzle? Well, this is by um, a constructor who hasn't been featured on this channel before, but he did reach out to me. Um, so thank you. Um, like I said in my previous videos, if you do want a video of your puzzle, feel free to reach out to me um, on Discord, and I will put my again put my discord details in the description and you can just pm me and say hey here's my puzzle and here's the rules and i just make sure it's been tested and uh, i will hopefully be able to feature that on my channel so this is by uh, yuji and it's called magic gopher sandwich and the rules are a little bit complex so um please uh you know if, if you get confused trying to read it in the description I'll, I'll do my best to go over it here um, but I don't think they're they're overly complex. They're just there's a few things mixed together that that might be a little confusing. So um, first of all, we do have normal Sudoku rules, um, and then I'm I'm going to do it a little bit out of order. But we um, I'm going to first explain the shaded cells. The shaded cells form a magic square, um, and they um, using the digits one to nine. So. Um, what, what a magic square is, if you haven't encountered that before, is it means that every row, so if we were to take these three digits and add them together, these three digits add them together, um, as, so the rows, the columns, and the diagonals, if we were to um, add each one individually, they all sum to the same number. So, so these three cells say, sum to the same as these three cells, sums the same as these three, sums the same as these three. So it's all the rows, columns, and, and the two diagonals. Um, and you got to use the numbers one through nine. So that's a magic square. Um, the second rule is uh, we have sandwiches. So if you haven't done a sandwich Sudoku before, we have these digits on the outside of the grid. And what we're looking at is the digits between one and nine. So wherever one and nine happen to appear, in the various rows and columns that have a marked clue. Um, what that means is that the um, digits in between the one and nine sum to that value. 
So for example here, if I have say a uh, one here and a nine here, then these two digits would have to sum to 18, which obviously is impossible. So that's not a great example, but you get the idea. But there is a twist, so pay attention here. We also have gopher holes. Um, each row, column, and box has exactly one gopher hole, so that makes nine total. And each gopher hole has a unique digit from one to nine. Now be careful, the blue shaded cells are the magic square. They have nothing to do with the gopher holes. If a gopher hole happens to be on a blue shaded square, um, that, is, that is absolutely possible and it does not affect the magic square. However, for our sandwich clues, the gopher holes are ignored. So uh, I'm just gonna say, for, for example, you gotta be careful about the, the zero clues because you could have a gopher hole in between a one and nine and the sum would still be zero. Or this 18, we could have more digits than you think because we could have a couple gopher holes across the 18 um, that where those digits get ignored and the, the non-gopher holes uh, will still sum to 18. So basically gopher holes are treated as zero for the sandwich clue purposes but are not treated as zero for the magic square purposes. So just to go over that again very quickly, we have a magic square, which is the blue cells, and they, they use the digits one to nine to form a magic square. We have the gopher holes, which also use the numbers one to nine. Each row, column, and box has exactly one gopher hole, and each gopher hole, gopher hole is a unique digit from one to nine. And we have the sandwich clues, where between the one and nine, the filling between the one and nine adds to the clue but the numbers over gopher holes count as zero. And I guess the other thing I should mention is um, if a gopher hole is on a one or a nine, then that the, the participating row or column cannot have a uh, sandwich clue. So you know some of these rows and columns do not have sandwich clues. And that could or could not be because there's a gopher hole on the one or nine, thus there is no sandwich. So I know I took a long time on those rules, but I wanted to make sure I explained those well. So go ahead and rewatch them if, if they're confusing or read it in the description, and then try the puzzle yourself. Um, my testing feedback on this is that it is, it's pretty fun and not too hard, so do give it a try, uh, despite the rules being a bit complex. And with that, I will get started. So um, I need to be careful because with say this zero clue here, it's really tempting to just stick a one here, but um, this could be a gopher hole, right? So one of these two is a one. Um, I suppose we could even have, oh yeah, we can't have more than one gopher hole in a, in a column, right? So we can't have more than one gopher hole between the one and nine. So the one is here or here. So I gotta be careful about that for all these zero clues. And that's probably one of the purposes of having so many zero clues is a lot of the gopher holes are probably between the one and nine. Um, but of course, the first thing we wanna do is deal with the magic square. So magic square always has five in the center. Um, and just, just to kind of go over the theory of the magic square, I'll leave the five in, but um, if you think about it, the numbers one through nine add to 45. So if I have three columns, each of which add to the same value, then 45 over three is 15. So that means every column, every row, and every diagonal adds to 15. Um, and so um, if you sort of work out um, how that, that ends up um, you know, playing out, uh, you end up having to have um, a specific layout for the magic square um, where the evens and odds are in specific places and the five is in the center. So um, for example, um, I, I think we need the, uh, I, always, I always get this backwards, so I might, I might correct it. Um, in a second, but I think we need the even numbers um, in the middle cells and the um, odd numbers on the corners, but I'm gonna double check that. So for example, we might have uh, a one here and a nine here. Um, for, ignore my reds. Um, we're just speculating here. So I might have a one and a nine here to make 15, because nine plus one is five. And so then with the one, um, I would have to use the, the seven here um, to add to eight, and then to get to 15, I would put a six. And then the six with the five makes 11, and so then I have to have a four here, 
And then, so now between the nine and seven, those add to um, 16. So that doesn't actually work. Um, so I think I probably got it backwards. Let's try it the other way. And I guess this is a good exercise for if you do forget how you would, how you would do this. Um, so let's try it this way. So let's, let's put the one and the nine somewhere again. So let's put one nine here. So um, two even numbers adding to 14 would have to be eight and six. So let's just put that in some direction. And then the uh, six, let's see, the six across the five here adds to 11. So I have to put a four here. Uh, four plus eight is 12. So I'd have to put a three here. And then eight plus seven is uh, 15. And then six plus seven is 13, so I need a 2 here. And so that does, I mean, obviously this isn't the correct result, but um, that does form a proper magic square. So I, I was right the second time, um, luckily. Um, so we have the odds in the middle, and then we have the evens on the outside. And I will continue to forget that as I do magic squares, but luckily we do have a way to, to confirm that. So now I can, I can do some eliminations here. So we can't have a 2, 4 here. Um, and then... What else do we have? Um, is that the only elimination on our magic square? I think it might be. So there's probably some elimination I can do on these corners here just to, well, okay, so across from the six and the eight, we can at least do that elimination. So um, uh, six plus five, is 11, so we would need the four. So let's just add four here. Oh, but we can't do the four here, right? That is the elimination that I missed. So we can't do uh, six plus five plus four because there's a four in this box here. Um, just double checking that, yeah. So we, we must be eight here. Um, so we might be able to finish the square actually, we'll see. Um, and so then eight plus five is 12, and so we need a three here. That's, what am I doing? 13 plus two is a bit of an off day today. Um, hopefully I will improve. But yeah, eight, eight plus two plus five. Um, the, out, the outsides always have to add to 10. So I should just do it that way um, to save myself some uh, embarrassment. So now we have four, six on the other side and that does make sense. Um, and then this one can't be nine. So this one can't be one. So we either have nine one this way or, or the one nine is in this order. This one can't be seven, so this can't be three. This can't be seven, so this can't be three. So yeah, this is the one nine. And then this is the three seven. And we could, can we be eight plus seven? Um, let's be careful about this and add it correctly. Eight plus seven is already 15. So we can't do eight plus seven. So we have to be eight plus three. Um, so that, that forms 12, 11, what am I doing? 8 plus 3 is 11, uh, so I need 4. And then on this side we have a 7, and then the 4 is opposite of 6. And then we obviously can't put a 9 here, so this is the 1, this is the 9. Okay, so we did finish the whole magic square from the start. So that was a good thing to start with. Um, let's look at normal Sudoku now, see what we can get. Um, so this four is very limited. It has to be in one of these two. And then threes look over here. So threes, three is down here somewhere. Might as well mark that. Um, I was looking at twos there. I'm looking at, okay, so nines are, are here. Oops, nines are here somewhere. And then I've got fours here as well as ah seven can be placed that's good these sevens look over to here seven is down here that should be useful um maybe yeah i mean seven's up here this might be some kind of empty rectangle shenanigans going on with this um, at some point so we'll see um, so 
Just looking for more. We got sixes here. Just want to make sure I get every possible easy thing before I start looking at the sandwich sums and make it hard on myself. Um, but I do think that probably is all I'm going to get. Okay, so we were looking at these sandwich sums. We have a lot of zeros. Um, we have to be careful about what we do with gopher holes. Um, so obviously if the 7 were here, it would be a gopher hole. And then the 1 would be here. But we actually, now that we know that the magic square puts a 1 here, this has to be a 1 to make our, our 0 sum. Uh, and then so this is a 7. Um, so we know that the 18 can't go this way because um, we can't do 18 in 2 cells, especially since we can't use a 9. So the maximum 2 cell sandwich clue is going to be an 8 and a 7. Um, just in a void, it's going to be an 8 and a 7, which adds to 15. Um, and so 15 would be the, the highest sandwich clue that would be 2 cells. But we also, uh, going this way, we wouldn't be able to use the 7. So we'd actually be 8, 6, and we'd be 14. So anyway, that means that the clue goes this way. And so we already have 7. So we get to use 11 plus possibly a gopher hole. We only get one gopher hole, though. So the 9's going to be... Well, okay, so the 9 can't be here, though. Because we have a 9 in the box already. Did I already mess something up? Like the magic square, maybe? That would be very bad. Um, let me just double check that all this adds to 15. 6 plus 9. So I think I, think I did fill a valid magic square. I just possibly didn't fill the only valid magic square. Let me just look at this again. So we obviously, oh, OK. Ah, I think that this is the one. And I think this is the gopher hole. So I'm going to mark that gray for the gopher hole. I didn't think about that for some reason. So yeah, if I make this a 1, that's, that prevents me from fulfilling the 18, as we saw. So the, the 1's up here instead. Um, and then this is the gopher hole. So the 9 is here, and we need to add to 25, and we don't use this 3. So at best we've got, well, we, can't also, we also can't use a 7 here. So at best we've got 8, 6. So if we were 8, 6, 4, that's 18. We can't count the 3. Um, one of these is a 7. Um, probably want to use the 7, actually. Um, yeah, because I, I can't put the 1 here, because that, that, would all, that max adds to 18. And then, uh, so I have to put the 1 here, and that puts the 7 here. And 18 plus 7, I've been very bad at adding recently, but that is 25. So I do think that is the only option, to put the 1, 7 here, and then this is going to be 6, 8. Oops, 6, 8. So that's good. Um, might as well keep looking here. So I could have just a 9 here. Um, this 3 can't be a gopher hole, because I already have a gopher hole that's 3. So it seems like there's a very linear solve path here. I kind of I like that. That's pretty neat, uh, at least so far. So that means this one's the, the 9, and there's no gopher hole in between to make the 0. Because uh, just, just to double check, because I made the mistake last time, I can't go down, because the 9 would go here, which would be fine, but that would make another 3 gopher hole. I'm only allowed to have one three gopher hole. So that means I have to go up. Um, and I can't put the one here because there's a four there. <laughs> and I can't put a one here because then um, no matter where I put the gopher hole, I'm going to add to more than zero. So this is, um, sorry, this is the nine. Um, and so then this has to be a gopher hole. Um, I don't know if it's the seven. Oh, it's not the seven, actually. So that puts the seven here. Um, so whatever value this is, it's a gopher hole, but I don't know what value. It could be any value right now um, that works in this cell. So what's the, I mean, we've, we've kind of been linearly traveling, so maybe there's um, something else I can get with what I've filled. Um, so I don't get another gopher hole in this box, this row or this column. So what does that, does that tell me anything? I can fill this cell, that's for sure. Um, you've probably been yelling me about the five here. 
And so then there's a 5 down here somewhere with the 9. Okay, so this 0 is fulfilled. I need to fill this 0, but I don't have a 1 or a 9 available. Um, the gopher hole is not going to be involved in the 0 clue, though, because we know it's here. So obviously I can't surround it with a 1, 9. So I can't put 1, 9 here because I have a 9 in the box. Um, I could put 1, 9... Oh, no, I can't put 1, 9 here because there's a 1 in this box. So, oh, where do I put the 1, 9? Maybe 9, 1 like this is the only option. This can't be 1. We already have a gopher hole. So I think the only option is the 9 here and the 1 here. Can't put a 1 or a 9 in this cell. Yeah, I think that's it. So this is, this is a 9. This is a 1. That makes this a 4. This 0 is fulfilled. Um, these aren't 9 anymore. That makes this a triple. Um, might as well fill it. 5, 6, 8. So anything seeing that? Not that I can tell. I do still need a gopher hole in this um, box. And it's not going to be on the 1 or 9. So that's good to know. This might be the 9 gopher hole. We'll have to see. So far I don't have a good, I don't have a candidate that could be the 9 gopher hole other than that one. Maybe this one. Oh no, sorry, this one can't be. I didn't see this 29 on the, on the right side. Um, so maybe this one. Oh no, this one has a 26 on it. This one has the 25. This one can't be a gopher hole. Oh, it might not be time to, to be figuring that out, but it's, it's nice to scout that out. So I'm, I'm very limited in... Let's Actually, so potential gopher holes would be... I'll pull market purple for 1 and 9 would be here, because that it's basically where two blanks intersect. So this row is blank. So this is another possibility for a gopher hole. Um, I also have this blank here intersection and this one and I only have the two and the two so um, the go the one nine gopher holes are going to be in the purples so I might as well keep that marked all right um, I probably could have just made more progress by looking at something else but maybe I should be looking at some of these horizontal clues yeah like this five here and I have a nine here so this can't be a gopher hole because we have one already. So this is the one. And then we have a five in the row. So what's remaining? We need a two, six, eight. I don't think anything sees that, but that does form a triple. So that makes this a triple of one, three, and four, I believe. This can't be 4, this can't be 1. This is a 0 clue, and the 9 is here. This can't be 1. So that means this one's the 1, and this is also a gopher hole. So now that we have the magic square done, I'll just mark this gray. Um, so that makes this 3 and 4. So we need 18 here, and none of them could be gopher holes. Um, we do need a gopher hole in this box, so it's going to be one of these two as a gopher hole. Um, I don't quite know how to figure that out yet, so we'll just try to keep that in mind. I don't know how to mark it either, so I just I guess I just won't. So of the remaining digits, what do we, what do we have remaining? We need a, We know there's a 2 in here. Um, we know there's a 7 in here, so we should be able to figure out the third digit as well. Um, so 18. So we've got 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 2 is 12, so we need another 6. So these aren't 6, and there's a 6 in here somewhere. So this is 2, 6, 7. So I can get rid of these pencil marks there. And there should be, yeah, the 7 is we clean up here. I don't think the rest are available, but that means this is 8 and this is 6. Which means this is a 2-8 pair, which means this one is 6. Could have gotten that from the 5-8 as well. I just hadn't looked there yet. 
Okay, so we have this 5. We did the 25. I remember that. This 18 is now done. This 15 obviously goes to the right. Um, again, 15, I think 4... No, 15 was the, an 8, 7. Uh, could be here, in which case this would be a 9. Alternatively, the 9 would be here. So the 9's in one of these two. Oh, we could have a gopher hole in this row. Oh, but the nines, the nines can't actually go here, or here, or here. So we have to have a 9 to the right of the 1, so it's going to be one of these two. Um, I'm going to, despite concerns, I'm going to mark that. Um, even though it's not, they're not in the same box, I'll try to remember that that's what that means. In general, we need a 9 here. Can this still be a 1? Yeah, it can. In fact, I think I'm very close to being done with 1s. So suspiciously, a 1 can be in one of these two. Um, so that means this one's not 1, but it never could have been. This column, hmm. let me think about this for a second. I'm trying to think if this column can provide the, no, this column can only provide one, go for, okay, I should have realized this when I put the purples in. Well, uh, now, now I do. So these purple cells are the only places, and I know that there's a one gopher hole and a nine gopher hole, and these purple cells are the only places they can go. This column can only contribute one of them, and this column can only contribute one of them. Same with this row and this row. So one of these two is a one or a nine, one of these two is a one or a nine, one of these two is a one or a nine, one of these two is a one or a nine. It's kind of like a one nine X wing. Um, it is a one nine X wing, but it's not, it's not, which means that, hmm, actually, is it? I think that means this one can't be nine. Maybe not. I guess, I guess the thought is, can can this just be one nine? Like, can one? No. Okay. Right. Each column can only contribute one gopher. That, that's that's the thing I keep forgetting. So, if this were nine, this could be the one gopher hole, and then this could be the nine gopher hole. Okay. So I can't I can't think of it that way. Um. So it's not quite an X-wing. It's like almost an X-wing, but. Um, so where can the one gopher hole go, I guess is the question. It has to go in one of these two. Because th this one can't be a one and this one can't be a one. So one of these is a one. Um, both look possible right now. And then where can nine go? This one can't, so this one can't be a nine. So if it is a gopher hole, it's the one. This could absolutely be a nine. This one can, this one can't be nine. So this one can't be nine and this one can't be nine. So we actually have the nine, the nine gopher hole is on the bottom and the one gopher hole is on the top. And I don't know how to resolve that yet. Darn, I thought I was going to get something out of that. I guess what I was thinking is that maybe in this column, this would have to be the one, because the one is restricted, but I don't think that's actually true. Because this could be the one, in which case that's a one. And we need 29. OK, well, the 29 is interesting. Because we know there's a gopher hole in this row, and it's in the sandwich somewhere. Um, 35 is the magic number for sandwiches, where if the 1 and 9 are in complete opposite sides, um, in a normal sandwich, that would add to 35. Um, but we know there's a gopher hole here, so uh, our max is actually 30, uh, sorry, not even 34, it's 33. With 29, if, the gopher, if, if we had a 1 here, in order to hit 29, uh, we'd have to have the gopher hole on the 6. These two can't be a gopher hole, so 
The six would be one of these four, not this one either, because we have a six in the column. So one of these would be a six. But alternatively, I could have the one, oh no, the one has to be in one of these two. So I can't, I couldn't have the one here or here, right, because these two ones. Can't put the one here, yeah, okay, so this is where the one is. So now, now I can actually use this logic of putting the one here, because I know, I know the, neither of these two can be a one, and one of the purples had to be a one, and, and then this purple can't be a one or nine anymore. So I can, I can remove these highlights, and I can make this one the gopher hole for this box and this column and this row. And so now we still don't know which one of these two is nine, although I am suspicious of this six clue, because a nine here would, would fit that perfectly. But I mean, we could have, and actually another way to work that would be a nine here. Um, well, I can't do two four. Sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place on uh, right now, but I'm just sort of noticing things as I go. This being nine, is okay. This being nine would put a six here. This being nine does work for the zero clue. Um, but I can't do two four here. But I could do six and then a gopher hole here. So is there anywhere I can put a nine and actually use this two? We're obviously not going up because there's no nine can't be placed here because it's nine. So we're going down. If the nine's here, that's a six for sure. <sighs> Sorry about that. I still have a bit of a of my cough. Um, so what was I saying? If the nine is here, the nine the nine's in one of these three. It's also in one of these three, but anyway, it's in one of these three. If the nine's here, that's a six. Hope that's obvious. If the nine's here, we could technically do two four to add to six, but we can't because there's a four in the row. So this would still have to be six with a gopher hole. If we were here, that's the question. Can a nine be here? No, because we know one of these two is nine. So we can't put a nine here. So that means no matter which one of these two is a nine, one of them is a nine, um, this one's a six. So we, we either this is the nine or this is a nine and that's a gopher hole. I don't know how much that helps, but it's good logic. It's, it's a digit. Um, I just saw this eight here, so this is five eight. <coughs> On the live stream, you could have just yelled at me about that one. Um, this is two, we have four, five, we need six and seven. This is not six. thinking about nines in this bottom band. I guess I guess I can just keep moving. Um, so well let me let me take stock of what we have done. We need this 15, but we don't know where the nine is. Um, because we could do 8, 7 here to add to 15. And then the 9 could be here or here. It works out pretty well for there to be gopher hole here. Because then I can do 8, 7, gopher hole 9. But it doesn't have to be. Um, this could be 8, 7, 9. Or 8, 7, gopher hole 9. This one can't be 8 or 7. So, um, Or if I did 3 cells adding to 15. That's also possible in, in several different ways. So I don't think there's really a way to resolve that yet. Um, this 18 is, is resolved. This 5 is resolved. 25, 0, uh, 29 
We still haven't figured... Actually, no, we, we did figure this out. I just didn't... Um, I didn't finish my thought on the 29. So let's do that now. Um, the... We know the gopher hole is on the 6, because otherwise we'd add to 35, or... We, we, we wouldn't add to 29. We need to, we need to exclude the 6 so that 35 minus 6 is 29. So wherever the 6 is, that's the gopher hole. So this can't be the 6, because we have a gopher hole already. So this is 2, 7, 6. That's good. Um, in fact, this was the only place for a 6 anyway. <laughs> so why do the easy thing when you can do the hard thing? I think that's the new motto for my channel. Um, 3, 5, 9. Um, this is not the 9. In fact, this is, this is not a 9. So this is 3 or 5. I don't think I can resolve this yet. I do want to think about this 0 at some point. And it obviously goes to the right. Uh, anyway, um, what, what was I doing? Um, we need to find the 6. So the 6 is up here somewhere. We know it's not here, because we have a 6 in the column. These are going to add to 26, and maybe I should look at that too. So the gopher hole does put a, a weird um, twist on this, but in, in normal sandwich logic, what you do is you'd say, these add to 26, these add to 10, so this whole thing adds to 36. We know the whole column adds to 45. So we can do 45 minus 36 and get 9, and say that these outies would add to 9. Um, but we have a gopher hole somewhere. So if the gopher hole were on, on the Audi, then that would mean the 9 would have to be on the Audi. So we know the gopher hole is not on the Audi, because we already have a 9 in the column. That logic, yeah, no matter what, according to the sandwich, these add to 36. But they actually add to more than 36 because the gopher hole is somewhere inside our sandwich. I think that much makes sense. I'm trying to wrap my head around that. Um, but the whole column doesn't add to 45 if we're, if we're excluding, if the gopher is counting as zero, we, we, whatever we're excluding does not add to 45. So I think it could still be in the Audi. Um, we know one of these two is a gopher hole, though. So this one's not a gopher hole. So this could be the gopher hole, and if it were, if it, were it would be the 6, which is kind of why I was looking at this. Um, so if the gopher hole were the 6, then that means that all of this adds to 36. Because we'd have, wait, it would add, no, 45 minus 6, 39. All this would add to 39, and this would add to 36, so this would have to be a 3, which does look possible. So if this were a 6, this would be a 3. If this is not a 6, then the gopher hole's in the sum. Now the question is, can I add to, I think I can add to 26 with a gopher hole in here somewhere. But where would it go? It doesn't go here, it doesn't go here, because we have a gopher hole in the row, we have one in the box. So if it were in the sum, it would go here. Does that restrict it? Maybe not yet. Kind of running out of uh, sandwich sums to use. There might be just regular Sudoku or something that I'm missing, but... If I can exclude this from being possible as the gopher hole, then I know I can place it here and put a 6. And a 3 here. Is there a way to make it work here? Um, if this were a gopher hole, that would make the gopher hole here. Yes, that's good logic. Okay. So if this were, if the gopher hole were anywhere but here, it would have to be here. It's the only other place. 
With a gopher hole here, if you look, where can a gopher hole go in this column? Well, these two boxes would be used up, and this row is used up, and this row is used up, so the gopher hole would go here. But we know in this row the gopher hole has to be a 6, and there's already a 6 in this column. So this, this one can't be the gopher hole. That means that this one is the gopher hole, and it's a 6. That was, that was pretty cool. I liked that. Um, we're having fun. So now we know that this is the 3, this is 5, this is, this is the 9, and it's a gopher hole. I can now unhighlight this, um, which means I can now officially say that the 9s are here somewhere. Um, I'm going to look at that in a second. Let me see if there's anything obvious to do otherwise. This is not 9. Oh, sorry, the box is done. This is a 3, this is a 5. Um, three, six, eight. This isn't six. This can't be a three or a six because it's a gopher hole. And uh, we have a three and a six already there. So this is the eight, three, six, like that. I feel like we are on the home stretch. And of course I say that with some hesitation. Um, okay, so this, this 26 is basically done. Um, do we have any other sums that, this is zero. Um, so I was going to look at this, but I was going to, I think I was going to, I'm still kind of doing Sudoku. Is there more Sudoku to do first? Um, fours? Yeah, this is, this is a four. Um, one of these two is a four. In fact, there's only three left in this row. Well, it looks like it's four, five, and nine. So the nine's not here. This is two digits left. This is two and eight. So we actually know what order that goes in. That finishes those as well. Um, this could never have been a four. Is this five nine then? Looks like it. Looking at what we need for this this column here, um, we have a one two. We need a three. We, so we need three. We need four, five, and nine. Yeah, this can't be three or nine. This can't be four or nine. This can't be four. I wanted these filled in so that I could figure out, because the, the, the last two go for, oh, sorry, the, the go for hole can't be here. Hmm. How many go for holes do I have? I have, I need one in here. It's going to be in this, it's going to be here. It's going to be this five. Good. Um, I need one in this column. No, I have one. This is six here. I need one in this column. And I need one in this column. I have not even looked at this 33 sum, um, but I can do the same exact logic. The two is the gopher hole in this column. So I should know what number the gopher hole is for this column. Um, I am missing the two, which I said was here. I have three. This is really hard to scan. Uh, the gopher hole is going to be a four in this column, uh, and it can't be here. So, and these are the only two places for four in the column. So, this is the gopher hole, and I think that was the last sort of deduction here. So, this being the gopher hole in four means that to add to six, this column has to have a nine here, and then this does fulfill the zero as well. That's a five. Um, this is actually the two. It's the only place for a two in the root column, and also it was the only place to put the gopher hole. So we have all our gopher holes now, we have our magic square, we have all our 
sums. So we knew we knew that this would be seven eight already. Um, just Sudoku now. This is a three. These two are five and eight. So this is the five. This is the eight. Keep getting a little bit off on my numpad and typing the wrong numbers. That makes this the four. These two are, we need a two, that's here. And we need a eight. This row needs a three. And this box needs a six. That two gives me seven, two, and eight, seven. Very nice. That was a, that was a cool puzzle. I really liked the idea. Um, the rows were a bit uh, tough to get through. Um, but I, uh, they weren't that hard to understand. Um, and I really liked the twist of like, normally when you have this many zeros in a, in a sandwich puzzle, it's like, it's trivial because all the ones and nines have to be next to each other. But I really liked the logic of, well, what if there's a gopher hole, right? So I think that was probably the, if I had to guess, that was the initial spark of the idea for this puzzle. So I thought that was pretty neat. Um, I haven't seen a puzzle like this before. I think it was uh, you, uh, just a novel idea by, by Yuji, so good job there. And very good execution, especially at the start. I really felt like I was being led down a path of like, oh, now that you've got that one, now here's the nine. Now that you have that nine, here's the one. Now you have the... And then you just sort of walk through it. Um, and then there was some very interesting logic right at the end there to um, resolve that last... Like I did, I actually didn't expect this column here. I probably could have looked at this column much earlier. Um, I've sort of been ignoring it. So I think I was like working left to right on the top. Um, but yeah, in this column here, uh, the fact that the remaining, we, we knew that this column had to have the gopher hole on the two, um, then told us that this gopher hole had to be four and there was only one place it could go and that resolved the rest of it. So that was a really cool ending. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you, Yuji, for the puzzle suggestion. I really enjoyed it. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching my solve and didn't get too frustrated at my horrible arithmetic, um, which, I don't know. I mean, I don't think I'm, I'm ever going to get better at that. Um, but yeah, so hope you enjoyed this. Please remember to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Uh, it, it helps grow the channel, um, and it helps me get towards uh, my sub goals. So it's a win-win for me. Um, there's real, it's free. You just click the subscribe button. So, um, and with that, um, do join me on Saturday if you can, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, um, and uh, have some fun solving puzzles with me. And until next time, thanks for watching.